the Canon EOS R mirrorless camera. I've been using the EOS Rebel T7i for about a year now and it's been great, but I think that we should have an extra camera around to use for other scenes. We're gonna be expanding, doing more types of video angles. So if we use this over in the front right here or not, it is still a benefit for the channel. So we're gonna go through and show you how to set up EOS R and how to get the settings correct for OBS so you can get your clean 4K HDMI onto your OBS scene. Since last year on the channel, I've been using the EOS Rebel T7i by Canon, a DSLR camera that's been working wonderfully. If you've come checked out any of the streams, we've been doing great with it. But due to expanding, doing more content, and trying different things, we got another camera. With that being said, I wanted to stick in the Canon realm of camera, so we went out and got the Canon EOS R mirrorless camera, which has a clean HDMI pass-through and supports autofocus at 4K resolutions. Now to get this thing set up, it does take a bit of tinkering. It is not a plug and play camera by any means you have to change the resolution on the camera as well as go into the OBS settings so we're gonna do that and from there show you how to get it all set up in OBS and show you the difference between these two cameras you might not need this but to start out I would say the T7i was a great option for me not like many impulsive creatives I went out and got an EOS R thinking that it would be compatible with all the T7i lenses that I have unfortunately it is a EF mount not an EFS mount which does change your cropping aperture but in general will let you you still use it if you have one of those adapters. We went out and got one of those adapters from Canon. Now when installing the adapter mount, you will want to line up your two red lines on the adapter mount as well as the camera. From there, it will slide in and you'll screw it in there. From there, you'll be able to use your EFS lenses, which I have all EFS lenses, which I didn't realize too much because I'm not a super big camera nerd, but I in general need to use them for what we're doing on stream. Once we've gotten past the lens adapter or you've gotten a lens, which was pretty pricey, I'd highly recommend you just get a lens adapter if you already have a T7i and you're looking to upgrade to the EOS R. You'll want to find some type of dummy battery. You can either get one from Canon direct from Amazon, which runs you about a hundred plus bucks, or you can get one of these dummy batteries, the Gonin, Go9, I don't know what to call it. We're gonna be testing it out. And if it fries this camera, it fries the camera and uh, we'll send it all back and you know, be all mad. And then I'll let you know that the camera was broken by this, but if not, it's gonna work. After the dummy battery, you'll need to have a cam link for video capture. You'll also wanna have some type of USB extension so you don't have any stress or weight on your cam link. Next, we're gonna go into OBS as well as the camera's settings and change the output resolution. Now for starters, you're gonna see the two bars on the side. That's because it's in photo mode and not in movie mode. So you press the mode on the top and that info at the bottom, you'll press info. Now when picking a movie mode, I'm picking CP3. This will be very important for OBS setup. And now you see it's full screen. You still won't be able to see this though because you'll need to go into menu. From menu, you will need to go to the first folder of the menu settings. You'll need to go to movie record quality. You will need to change it to whatever output you're going to set in your OBS. So if you're going for 4K and you're looking for either of these, they'll work just fine. If you're looking for, you know, a FHD, make sure that you change your output camera resolution to 1920 by 1080. If you're going even lower, you could do a 1280 by 720, but make sure that in OBS you change your camera's resolution output settings. Also make sure the frames per second match because if they don't, you will not get any picture. Other settings we have to change. For here, pretty much keep everything the same except for HDMI display. If it's set on this, you'll want to have it on the clean HDMI display. From there, you'll want to go over to your wrench and you'll want to change your power savings. Auto off, disable, viewfinder, disable. It all depends on what you need specifically, but um, we're gonna put this on 30 for now. From there, you'll need to go back and go over to the sixth tab of the wrench folder and go down to custom shooting modes. And then you'll need to register settings. I set it for C3, but you can set it to whatever you put your camera's movie mode into and press okay. From there, it's good to go. If you want a better video quality, go with the PAL over the NTSC 
up to you and what you do. Now, if you've gone through all those settings, make sure that you remember what your camera's resolution output is, as well as its frames per second. This is very important for setting up with OBS. For changing your camera's output resolution within OBS for the camera source, you'll go to your camera source, make sure you're on your cam link. From there, scroll down to where it says resolution and change your resolution to what you had it set in your EOS R camera resolution settings. Now that your camera output and OBS input settings are proper, You'll notice that there's a bit of a delay between the video and the audio. We'll have to go into OBS further for a fix. As you can see, there's a bit of a delay on my video to my audio. So there are two different settings you'll probably want to go in and change on the screen in OBS. There is the camera filters, which you would want to maybe do a video delay which is potentially yours fix, or the other one, which is the advanced audio properties. Now to access the advanced audio settings, go to the gear in your audio mixer, right click it, and then go to advanced audio properties. These can be really tinkered around in the negative. So if you have to speed it up, you can speed it up or slow it down. Based on where you need to have your settings, this is based on your settings tinker around with it. I set all my audio tracks to 300 milliseconds plus, so if you wanna do that, try it out. Now, so far on the EOS R, we've had a little bit of a video delay, but we were able to solve that in OBS, changing around some of the advanced audio settings. So we slowed down our audio so that it matches with the video when it's output. So other than that, the T7i has been a great entry level camera for me. I would definitely recommend it to someone that doesn't have the extra cash to push out for all the extra stuff. Cause like what we're using right now is a 10 to 18 millimeter lens here for a wider shot. It doesn't work on the EOS R by itself. So we had to get the adapter on top of the new dummy battery and then all that other stuff. So thanks everybody for checking out this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, get ready for more content and uh, happy streaming, stay elevated and peace out. The Rebel T7i video quality, here we go. Yes. This is recording on the Canis EOS R. You can see those bars on the side. We're gonna try to fix that. Let's go. Oh wow. I got the screen just turning off on me. I gotta keep it alive. That's a problem in itself. I'm gonna fix that. This is a video recording of the Canon EOS R. Also getting rid of those sidebars. We'll be going through that too. Let's go. This is a video recording using the Canon EOS Rebel T7i. Testing, testing, testing. It looks like the video is a little bit slower than the audio right now. Big check, one, two. Oh, way off.